Hey, it's Jamie Moore here. You're on the Off The Ball League of Ireland podcast. And I'm very happy to welcome a man who scored one of the best League of Ireland goals ever seen on Saturday as Sligo Rovers beat Shamrock Rovers 2-1. Jack Keeney curled in a right-footed free kick and... It was brilliant, and a few days after, Mr. Messi did it for Barcelona against Liverpool, and it's had, uh, like, millions of views. Jack's joining us on Skype. How are you, sir? Good, Jamie. How are you keeping? Great stuff, Jack. Um, tell me more about this free kick before we have a look at it, because it was unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, well, I suppose, I think David Colley got filed by Jack Byrne, and I suppose me and Regan have been on the free kicks all year, and it was kind of my side, so I was confident enough in hitting it, and... I kind of knew when I struck it, I struck it nicely, and it was thankfully I went in. How many views has it had, to your understanding? Uh, I'm not sure. I think it was over a million the last time my mum was saying, so I think half of them were from the family. So, but um, I know it's great, but more importantly, we got the three points, which was the main thing. Yeah, because it went on the At Sligo Rovers Twitter page, then it went on the SSE Atrici League page, and then like a load of other outlets just picked it up and as these things generally do once they catch fire on Twitter they really do fly and, and really do go viral and your name was trending on Saturday night Yeah I think it's the 433 and Breacher Report I don't, I'm not really fond of them I think my brother and sister kind of told me about it but look it's, it's great to get the, the goal over all the social media but for the big thing for me and the, the players was to get the three points in a, against a massive uh, Shamrock Rovers team. Yes, anybody who's been under a rock all week, let's have a look at that goal courtesy of the Sligo Rovers Twitter page. Wow. Just unbelievable. So yeah, for those uh, who are listening to the podcast, you need to see that goal if you haven't seen it already. Just check out at Sligo Rovers on Twitter or type Jack Keeney in anywhere online and you'll find it. So Jack, the free kick is awarded and you're the right footer. Regan Donnan is a left footer, so probably in a position where it would suit that right footer. How early in, you know, after the ref has, you know, I suppose, blown his whistle, do you decide this is mine and I'm going to score in the top corner? Yeah, I suppose I was confident in my own ability once I got the thing, but the funny thing was I think the gaffer was shouting on for Regan to take it, and then Ronan Coughlin came up to me just before we were hitting the day before, hitting a few free kicks, and he, he absolutely stanched one. So uh, he he was confident, but no, I, I was confident in my own ability, and thankfully I went in. Yeah, now something that happens all the time on League of Ireland training grounds around the country is the players stay out after training and kick balls around and it drives managers insane because they want the players to go in and get the load off their legs but they're smashing balls around some are actually you know asking the reserve goalkeeper or the under 19 goalkeeper to stay out with a bag of balls and some mannequins others are just wasting time how much do you practice your free kicks and the practice clearly made perfect on Saturday yeah I suppose the gaffer maybe wants us to do it earlier in the week just to take the load off ourselves but um yeah, normally Monday and Tuesday we'd be in and me and a few of the other boys get, get a few mannequins and the goalkeeper's in. No, I don't think I've <laughs> hit a better one than that, to be honest. But uh, no, practice makes perfect and thankfully it went in in the end. How early after you struck it did you know it was in? <laughs> I, I think I was halfway running over before, just after I hit it. But um, I think it was a rush of blood going over to the Shamrock Rovers fans. But look, it was, um, it was great to get the, the goal, to be honest. Yeah, your celebrations led to some unbelievable photos of you in front of the Rovers fans and one fan jumping over the fence and, and you know, there was no, nothing really happened, Barry, you kind of went up to each other and uh, that's something that we don't always see in the League of Ireland but I, I know a lot of the Sligo fans weren't too impressed with, with how the Rovers fans reacted but you did go over to celebrate in front of them. Yeah, and I, I didn't even, I just kind of turned around and it was, they were the first ones to see, to be honest, and then... I think there was a few cans being thrown onto the pitch and then a few fans, which is nice to be seen, but look, it happened and thankfully nothing nothing came of it. Yeah, and as you mentioned, it ended up in an important win and two brilliant goals as well. The other goal in the game was fantastic as well. And the final whistle blows and there's a really good video again on the Sligo Twitter of just the eruption of, of the crowd. I think over 2,500 at the match, maybe more actually, I'll check that in a second. But just the fact that your goal led to the points and the fact that the goal was so good and there was such a great buzz around the showgrounds. Yeah, and I suppose the fact against Shamrock Rovers is always that added bite and them being uh, the leaders and I suppose us, we wanted to, to build on the win from Monday against UCD, added that extra bite and I suppose we were probably disappointed and giving away the Iron Greens goal, we were a bit of slack defending but luck, um, thankfully we scored and it was a massive three points and hopefully we build on it now for Waterford. Yeah, another big game against Waterford as well and uh, like after the match, you were obviously aware 
you know, at the level of the strike and, and you knew that, it, you know, because the games are all video that it was going to go on Twitter and stuff. How early did you kind of realise that this is going to go viral and that everybody who's anybody in football in this country and beyond are going to be watching your goal and talking about you and comparing you to a certain Mr. Lionel Messi? Yeah, I suppose. I think it was the... the that night we were uh, we were in for training on um, Sunday for a bit of recovery and I stayed at one of the boys' houses and it was up and then I kind of <laughs> my phone started hopping from that and it kind of has never stopped the past two or three days. But look, as, as I said, it, it, it's 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 good for me to get the goal, but more importantly, we got the three points and for the team. Yeah, the first thing I did on Sunday morning was send a WhatsApp to Rory, the Sligo media officer, and I just said you know who I want on my podcast question mark and he replied Jack and I said yes please and uh, <laughs> here you are so yeah. we're now on Wednesday and the goal has had millions of views over a million for sure uh, like it just I, sh- I suppose shows with this league you know when something like that is captured and it is put up immediately that it can go really far and it can get people talking yeah and I suppose across the water I have a, a cousin over in America who has seen it so look that's the that's the beauty of the social media of it kind of catches fire and goes to every nearly around the world like and um, yeah Has there been much reaction to it in terms of you know texts and phone calls and I'm sure a bit of banter in the training ground but have you heard you know from anybody or even maybe on on your social media channels you know different people telling you how, how good it was? Yeah phone's probably been hopping from family to my mum wasn't at the game so she was. She wanted to see it uh, straight away, but um, now the boys were slagging me a bit, saying I'm, I'm never going to hit a better one, and it was in a complete shank and all this. But look, that's that's part of football, and hopefully I'll score a few more now. Yeah, just the next time you're awarded a free kick, the expectation is <laughs> now going to be on you too, and, and that's a serious point because you know when you've done that and it's you know been so widespread in terms of views and stuff, and your own teammates and your own manager have seen it. This Friday, for example, the whistle blows at the freaky edge of the box. You're, you're stepping up, and, and there's an expectation for you to, to try and do something similar, which would be very, very hard to match. Yeah, exactly. And I suppose that's that's part of football. You you set high standards, and if um, I'll be looking forward to hopefully hitting the back of the net if uh, anytime soon. But um, look, I just have to keep practicing, and hopefully another one will come along. Who's was better, Jack Keeney, your goal or Mr. Messi? Uh, to be honest, I think Messi's was was phenomenal now, but um, the boys are giving me stick about it. But um, ah, look, if to be compared to him is 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 just phenomenal. Like, yeah, and I loved the fan clips from you know everybody Snapchat or Instagram. They make a video, and and Sligo had it up, or the League of Ireland had it up on on Sunday morning. That you see the goal going in, and then your man's phone just goes mental, and you can just hear yeah. the screams, and, and and that's something for you, I'm sure that that's an extra bonus that you, you actually were able to kind of see behind the scenes of of what that goal meant to those fans. Yeah, I suppose there's no love lost between the two teams and the fans, and I suppose it was it was a massive win for us. And look, it gets the the club's a real community base, and it gets all the the fans happy and enjoying their weekend, especially it was a bank holiday, so. I think they were going home happy, waiting for the next home game now against Derry for hopefully another three points. Jack, for people who wouldn't necessarily have known a huge amount about you, this is your first kind of full-time season in the team. I know you played a little bit last year in the Cup and stuff. You're only 20, born in 1999. What's your own background in, ter- in terms of, of you know playing football as a kid, how you ended up you know playing in the Underage League of Ireland and now for the Sligo first team? Yeah, well, I suppose growing up in Gaelic family, my granddad won All Ireland in 1956, so I suppose that's where we get the football from. Um, my brother and sister both represented Donegal, so growing up it was probably Gaelic until I had about 14, 15, and then the soccer kind of came on board and kind of got more and more uh, influential. And then I suppose when I was about 16, 17, when the new League of Ireland under 17 came, I had to make a choice, um, and I suppose I've I picked the Gaelic and or I picked picked the soccer and I suppose that's I haven't looked back since. Um, I was in the under seventeen setup with uh, Niall Harrison, Daniel Leary, and Colin Jinks, and then Brian Dorian in the nineteens. And I suppose I have to give my hats off to them. They've looked after me and gave me great coaching that have uh, pushed me on to the first team. And the the coaches Jared Little, Kevin Deary, and um, the gaffer this year and Rustler have been phenomenal. I suppose they just let me go out and play my own game and breathe the confidence um, in me. So, yeah, I'm thrilled. I'm loving life, to be honest. 
Yeah, and it's something that's, you know, we hear all the time, different, you know, people at your age when you were making that choice between Gaelic and soccer or soccer and rugby and stuff. Like we had Aaron Dobbs in studio who plays for Longford earlier in the year. He was with Shamrock Rovers under 19s and 17s and, you know, a really top underage player. And, and he was still playing a bit of gal on the side and trying to hide it from his football club, soccer club, and trying to hide it from his dad. Like, and for you now, the fact that you're a regular in that Sligo team and you've done what you've done with that goal the other night, it's definitely proved to be the right decision. But coming from a Gaelic family, how hard was that to choose the soccer? Yeah, I suppose growing up, looking at my brother playing for Donegal and my sister, it was, it was always, a, not, not a dream, but it was a, a privilege to play. And I suppose I played with Donegal at, at about 16 and then I was in the minor setup. And I suppose I said I kind of need to really concentrate on one if I want to make a living out of it. And I always says, Look, the soccer is a bigger opportunity, and it can always go back to the Gaelic. And thankfully, I've I've, I've worked hard, and um, I've got where I am now. Yeah, and you're back to action this weekend. The game away to Waterford. I think it's on Saturday. Is it because the European Championship on the seventeenth are on in the RSC in the middle of the week? So it's a Saturday yeah, evening game. Yeah, so it's a Saturday evening kickoff. Yeah, and the form, excuse me, in, in the last couple of games you know, has been good in terms of you picked up that late point against Finn Harps with a last minute peno, beat UCD and now have beaten Shamrock Rovers and it, it's really kind of jumped you up the table. You're still seven, but now nine ahead of ninth place and, and there, there was a time, I think, where you were, you know, looking over your shoulders more so than looking up now and, and with this period of form, we hope to try and kick that on now at the weekend. Yeah, and I suppose we were probably disappointed in the, our performance against Finn Harps. We probably... We're lucky on the day to get a, a penalty in the 90th minute. But um, look, we've kicked on from that. We had a great win up in UCD, which we needed to. It was a big game because we didn't want to be looking over our shoulders. We want to be looking up the table more than looking down. And then, look, there's, it's always an added bite. And against Shamrock Overs, they're the, the top team in the league at the moment. And you want to be playing against the best players in the league. And I think we showed that on, um, on Saturday from 1 to 11. And the boys even coming off the bench put their bodies on the line and that's what that's what you need to get uh, points off the big teams great stuff Jack Keeney thank you so much for your time the best of luck on Saturday off now to practice some more free kicks with you <laughs> cheers Jimmy have a nice day